Today, I'm going to be taking these ingredients and composing them into the most amazing classic Victoria sponge cake. Stay tuned. Hmm. I'm thinking today is a say something hat day. Yes, today is a say something hat day. Hmm. composing cook. It's going to be a classic Victoria sponge cake. You can't beat the classics. So let's begin. In my processor I have 200 grams self-raising flour, 25 grams corn flour, 225 grams caster sugar and one teaspoon baking powder. Now, if you haven't got the corn flour, you can just use 225 grams self-raising, but I think the corn flour just makes it that little bit lighter, but it's up to you. And it's always a good ingredient to have in the house anyway. So that's in the bowl, and all I need to do is add one teaspoon of vanilla essence. I'm gonna eyeball that, that'll do. And four large eggs. Okay, let's just throw them in. And 225 grams of butter or margarine, whichever you prefer. By the way guys, we're preheating the oven to 170 degrees as a fan assisted oven, blah, blah, blah. And if you haven't got a fan assisted oven, probably about 180. Thank you, Aaron. You're welcome. Right, let's get the lid on and let's do it. Well, come and have a look. It's mixed very nicely. However, I want it to be a little bit looser, so I've got some milk here. So I will put the uh, lid on, I will add it a little bit at a time. I just want it a little bit looser. Would you like to clean your finger? Yeah, no, no. Right, so let's get this back on. Come look, there we go, perfect. That's what you want. See how that consistency is nice. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I might even put a bit more. I would say you probably need to put roughly between one tablespoon and four tablespoons of milk. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Okay, what I have here are two 21 centimetre lined and greased cake tins. So we are gonna divide that lovely, this lovely batter between the two. Mm, 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 look at that. Come on, come on. So there's the mixture. I'm just gonna make sure the bottom is all covered, like so. Give it a tap, like that. And it needs to go in the bottom of a 170 degrees um, preheated oven, like Aaron said. I'm gonna cook that at 20 minutes to begin with. It will take between 20 and 25 minutes, but I'm gonna start at 20. There we go. Okay. Cake mix jar at the arm is optional, by the way. Oh, oh dear, look at that. <gasps> nice. I need to wash this out for the buttercream. However, I am actually going to make my own raspberry coulis to go in the middle. Um, you can obviously use store bought raspberry jam, that is absolutely fine, but I've got so many raspberries. I'm going to I give grew it them in the garden. Yeah, Aaron grew them in the garden. We've got so many of them frozen. And so I'm actually going to give it a go and make it. I haven't made this before, so I'm just going to give it a try and see how it turns out. If it goes to pot, we actually don't have any raspberry jam. We're going to have to have like... Butter cream. <laughs> Butter cream only, yeah, exactly. So let's give this raspberry coulis a go, shall we? 
I've got a bag of raspberries. I haven't weighed them out. I'm just going to see what we've got in here. Just as a guide. Okay, we've got 272 grams of frozen raspberries. Right, put that in the pan. Get the pan on, gently. I'm just going to put a drop of water, just so it doesn't stick. Help them break down as well. I'm going to cover that. Basically, you want to leave it until the raspberries break down and you end up with a mush. So, let's have a look. So it's starting to fall away. It's starting to all break down nicely. Just stir it. Okay, leave that again just to break, because you can see some of the raspberries are still obviously frozen. We need all that. We need all that frozenness to, uh, <laughs> basically we need them to thaw, right? Okay, right, let's leave that for a sec. Move back on, just keep an eye on it. There's no real timing to this. You've just got to watch it, basically. So come and have a look. You can see what's happening. They've all broken down nicely. Now, I need to sweeten this. This is personal taste. I'm gonna do it a teaspoon at a time. You don't want it too sweet, but you don't want it too sour. Kind of want it, you want it in between, right? Let's go for one teaspoon first. <laughs> I think that's about right. I think that's perfect actually. It's, it's sweet, it's sharp, perfect. Perfect. Perfecto. Now, how are we gonna thicken that? Is it gonna be corn flour, Michael? Well done, Aaron. <coughs> corn flour is amazing. I'm gonna start off with one teaspoon corn flour. Mix it with a tiny bit of cold water. That's all you need. We'll start with this and work from there. Okay. And stir it. Bring it up to the boil. You can actually see it thickening already. Are we trying to get a general consistency? Yes, oh, definitely. Perfect, look, look at that. Gonna leave that now just to simmer for a couple of minutes so it thickens even more. So that was three teaspoons of corn flour with approximately three teaspoons of water to mix it with. I think we can go with that and as it cools it will get thicker as well. So this has been bubbling away nicely for about two to three minutes. You can see it, look at that, it's nice and thick. That's what we want. Now it will thicken more as it cools so I'm going to take it and transfer it to a bowl. Now this needs to cool completely. All right, so let's leave that to one side now. So the BB's about to go off, and I can tell you now, in total, they had been cooking for 25 minutes. So I put them in for 20, and then I added another five on top. So for me, in my oven, it was roughly, well, it was 25 minutes to cook them. Let's just check. Yeah. Perfect, yeah, it's springy. That's what you want. So they can come out now. If you just touch the top, you can see that they're quite springy, which is what you want. You can put skewering, but I can tell they're ready. So they need to sit in here in the cake tins for 10 minutes, then I will turn them out. Nice. So they need to now rest until, until they are totally cool. Here's the um, raspberry, you see how much thicker that's got already? Wow. Now I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Let's make the butter icing. Icing sugar is one of those things that just goes everywhere. And I don't understand why, but most people when they make icing sugar, they put it in a bowl or they use, they use, the, they use one of these and it just goes everywhere. It makes no sense to me. Use the processor. Hold on. 
What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna just put it on just to break it up, make sure there's no lumps in there. Let's see, you can see obviously, you can see it all puffing up there, can't you? And this stuff goes everywhere. So in the processor, it's all contained, right? Okay. I've got 300 grams icing sugar in here, and to that, I'm gonna add 150 grams butter, proper real butter this is. Why would you get hand whisk and whisk it or put it in that? It takes ages. Put it in this, put the lid on. Hear how it's turning? Hear how you can tell it's ready, the, the noise just changes. So let's take the lid off. And do you know what? There's your icing sugar. All we have to do now is make it a little bit thinner to make it more spreadable. So I'm gonna put actually one teaspoon of vanilla extract in there because I can. You don't have to do that, but why It's not? better with it though, exactly. Right, let's put this back on and I've got some milk in this jug. Spread it like that now. Let's have a look. Tastes amazing. Needs a bit more milk though. You want to be able to spread it very quite easily because you don't want to put it on the uh, Victoria on the sponge and then it starts to drag. Drag exactly. Oh, I'm gonna go, even go a bit more than that actually. A bit more. Oh. There we go, look. It's like, it's just like cre you know, ice cream, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's what you want, easy to spread. No puffs of ice and sugar everywhere. It's all contained, ready to go. And it's lump free, perfect. You've got a food processor, use it. Okay, let's do this. So let's go with that one. Put the raspberry on the bottom layer. Look at that. That's what you want. Nice and thick. Let's go for one, two. Let's start with two first. Three. You don't want to take it all the way to the edge because obviously when you put the the Sponge on top, it will squelch a bit. Let's go four. Now, let's get the... <gasps> the icing sugar, sorry, the icing, the butter icing on top. See how easy it spreads. Slap it on. <gasps> Look at that. I probably should have taken off this before I actually put the um, the icing on because it has torn a bit. For it sure. doesn't matter, who cares? It looks good. All you need is some icing sugar. Spoon for the topping. I'm gonna put that little crevice. There we go. Right. No one would ever know. Except everybody that's watching this video. It's our little secret. Uh-huh. Here you have it. 
your classic Victoria sponge cake. Sometimes you can't beat the classic, so make it, cut it up into slabs, have it with a cup of tea and enjoy it. And if you've liked my video, please press the like button, subscribe and hit that bell notification button. And if you have any questions or any comments, please leave them below and I will answer all your questions and any comments that need answering as well. So make this and enjoy it and I will see you soon. Mwah! So I